uh, to the CHP that has been trailing this for a long time. Now we are in uh, the Monterey Park area now, and you see that's the black vehicle that they're chasing right there. Uh, now this is a stolen car. We don't know the details about this, the theft of it. We do know it's a Grand Theft Auto suspect. Here's what's interesting, Susie. We've been listening to the radio traffic. Mm -hmm. The suspects inside are live streaming. So the law enforcement officers are watching them run from the police. And uh, we don't want to give away some tactical information, mm -hmm. but I can tell you uh, they're not being very smart about what they're saying because the police are actually garnering a lot of information from the suspects themselves who are live streaming this uh, Do, theft. Does it sound like they're almost like showing off, Mike? You that know, they stole it, this car and what they're doing? Yeah, it's a little difficult to tell really because I, we don't have access to that live stream. Yeah. We're certainly looking for it, but I don't have mm -hmm. access to it at the moment. Um, but what we do hear is we hear them talking about some of the plans that these guys have made. We hear the CHP saying, okay, on the live stream, they've said this, this, and this. We want to go act accordingly based on what they're saying. And again, I don't want to give away too much, so we're not going to get into a lot of the details about what they're saying. But uh, these guys are live streaming, and it's not going well for them because law enforcement is kind of on to what they're talking about. Uh, this also has a back window that's broken out. It's hard to tell if that was how they gained access to the car to steal it or exactly what that was. But I can tell you, we have been going fast. Yeah. Uh, 120 miles an hour here on the 60 freeway. And they've been pretty exclusively on the 60 freeway for the duration uh, of this chase. And I'm just playing back some of the radar data. It looks like Star, which is uh, the Riverside Sheriff's helicopter, originally started this uh, maybe following the freeway in Moreno Valley. Mm. So we've covered quite this distance from Moreno Valley. Uh, we are now coming up on the six, we are on the 60 freeway coming up here on this next freeway interchange, the 710, as we enter into the Boyle Heights, East LA area right now, Susie. Wow. I mean, this is one of those cases where we're talking about the CHP in pursuit at high speeds, and there's very limited things that they can do in terms of stopping this car when they are on the freeway, Mike. Uh, yeah, almost nothing. I mean, you oh. know, we've seen CHP, uh, they can try to do some spike strips, you know, that's a possibility, but we have seen the challenges of spike strips on sure. freeways. The freeways are so wide, it's hard to get them exactly exactly where the suspect is. Um, you know, the only thing that CHP has going for them is this person, has, this driver has been consistently on the 60 freeway. Right. Now, Riverside Sheriff hung in this for a long time. They hung in it all the way through kind of the Whittier Narrows area, South San Gabriel, uh, before they finally relinquished it to CHP. Mm. Now, see, they did not want CHP to take it over through Riverside County, through San Bernardino County, and into LA County. It wasn't until we got almost to the Monterey Park area that they finally let CHP take over. As we came on the air, you saw those CHP units. They were just getting into place and taking over I from see. the Riverside Sheriff's Department. So that's where we're at right now as we continue to just barrel down the 60 freeway here, pulling away from the officers yeah, now as well. Quite a bit, aren't they? Wow, no kidding. Well, if you're just joining us here on KCAL News at 10, this is an extended version of KCAL News at 10. We're just joining you with this breaking news. The CHP in pursuit of the driver of a stolen car. We believe multiple people are inside this car. Mike Rogers on the assignment desk telling us that they are actually live streaming this as it happens. Law enforcement agencies uh, got some word that they are doing that and they were able to find that live stream and they are now viewing that as this happens, uh, as this live chase happens for you on live television, they are watching a live stream of these individuals. I don't know how many people exactly are in this car, but we know there are multiple, more than one than the driver. Um, but they are live streaming whatever is happening right now, and the officers are getting information from that, Mike. They are, and uh, Orlando on our assignment desk just got me some new information. This car is a very fresh stolen, stolen at 1010 tonight. Uh, in the city of Moreno Valley, I told you we had seen the sheriff's airship uh, kind of in that area, and we do now know that that is where it was stolen from at 1010 tonight on Cactus Street hmm. uh, in the city of Moreno Valley. I'm trying to listen right now to CHP and figure out the tactic of why they're so far back. I don't know if CHP is trying to go into more of a follow mode, but mm -hmm. they, they have a significant distance from the suspect vehicle. You know, we do have uh, at least two helicopters over it right now, law enforcement. We've got uh, H58, which is from the CHP, uh, their helicopter, as well as a sheriff's helicopter is overhead this as well. So they've got eyes on them, but they've definitely, uh, to me, this looks like a conscious decision that they've asked the ground units to pull back because mm -hmm. they were right on his tail. Uh, and now we see them at a pretty significant distance behind yeah, them. And we see that often with the CHP and other law enforcement agencies as they don't want to put too much pressure on this driver. Um, already inside this car, they're driving really fast as we've been seeing the speeds at over 120 miles per hour, as Mike on the desk was telling us. And if they put more pressure by being so close to them, not only are they putting the you know, CHP officers' lives in danger, but also the public, because they never know what's going to happen. This person might make some erratic moves while they're driving that fast at 
that high rate of speed and should something happen I mean definitely that you know that's very dangerous for drivers as well as those CHP officers in chase right now but they're doing their best to uh, you know keep their eyes on this one I'm sure with the chopper as well as Mike has been talking about uh, we've been talking about multiple agencies involved in this it started with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department in Moreno Valley this car stolen at about 1010 off of Cactus Street and now we're on the 60 freeway and uh, we've been on this freeway most of the time actually the entire time from Riverside County right, right. and mm -hmm. now we are in the downtown LA Suzy mm -hmm. area we are passing Union Station and just for some you know, context, we are slowing down now, but as he was coming into downtown, he was doing over 100 miles an hour, which uh, is probably a very good reason that the CHP backed off. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I'm listening to, they're trying to sure. get some of the other CHP units from the central office into position now. But you see we're going through the downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we hope he stays on the freeway. Uh, certainly at these speeds, going that fast on surface streets is just, would be the worst case scenario here. Sure. So uh, as difficult as it is to see him kind of, you know, get away and mm -hmm. uh, not get away, but have law enforcement a little bit further back, uh, we would hate to see him driving at any kind of speeds like this. Uh, on surface streets. So we're coming up on the 101 and the 110 interchange here and trying to see which way he's going to go, but still weaving around those cars. Uh, you know, even Susie, at times he was blacked out as he was going uh, at these high rates of speed. Mm trying to hide from the uh, authorities, right? That's what yeah. they often do. You know, they'll turn off the lights, you know, thinking that oh, maybe looks, that will help. It, sorry, Susie, and no. if, our, if SkyCal can pan back down, Quan, yeah. uh, right where that the, the spotlight was from the helicopter, it looks like the car, okay, now we're back moving, but he did stop right there mm. on the side of the road. Um, so now we're back up to the right on the 110 freeway, that car right underneath that spotlight where uh, that suspect vehicle is continuing now northbound on the 110 as we kind of pass the Dodger Stadium. Uh, we see that CHP unit there, uh, and I'm going to ask our photographer to actually pan back up. They're keep continuing on on the freeway, on the northbound side of the 110 freeway here, uh, as CHP is, is right behind him. You know, they do have got him uh, from the air there as well, the two helicopters. You see the night sun there, right kind of in the center of the screen, so the car is going to be kind of right underneath of that. Uh, we've got that from the CHP helicopter. The sheriff's helicopter is also kind of right in tow there as well. And actually, you know what? That might be the sheriff's helicopter providing that light. They look mm. like they may be a little bit lower uh, as we go to the 110 freeway, now coming up on the 5, passing Elysian Park. Yeah, we're talking about multiple agencies being involved in this before the CHP joined in. Uh, right when we took it is when the CHP joined in. But right before that is the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, along with their chopper, as Mike was talking about. And uh, they were in pursuit of this car from Moreno Valley as it was stolen. And then they took off, and that's when this chase began. And we've been on the 60 freeway and this exiting entire the time. freeway right now. Oh, there, yeah, for the first as you see, time. it make that right turn off oh, the yes. freeway off the 110. This is the first time we've seen him on surface streets. Yeah, and we're talking about how, you know, we'd like to see them keep going on the freeway just because of how dangerously and how fast they were driving. We don't want to certainly pose that risk on local, you know, surface streets here as this is a very dark area. You know, they're, they're definitely taking a little slower though, as you can see, um, but I don't see any officers too close behind. Right, and that's kind of where we get into these mm -hmm. sticky situations. They go into these tracking modes. We saw that, uh, was it last night, night before, mm -hmm. uh, in the Calabasas area where LAPD went into tracking mode. They pulled in to a mobile home park and got out and ran and there were no units behind this person and now uh we're kind of doing back the same thing it looks like getting back, back on the, the freeway. freeway now yeah so yeah. i believe this is going to be the southbound 110 so we'll go back into the downtown area and uh, who knows what their plan is here sure. are they are they trying to go into downtown to lose law enforcement what's you know uh, who knows if they even know what the plan is apparently live streaming this whole situation as it goes on maybe they're more focused on that which is you know, uh, kind of unusual, not unusual. I, I, we've, we've dealt with that a handful of times. It's not terribly frequent, but we have seen that before. But again, uh, you know, at least the lights are on. They were blocked out for a period of time and the speeds have slowed down a little bit. And you know, that is the tactic of these law enforcement agencies when they go into tracking mode. That is their, their goal here sure. is to take some pressure off that driver. Uh, and maybe it, maybe it's working a little bit. Yeah, it seems like it is. They seem to be slowing down at least somewhat when we uh, uh, exited the surface streets. Um, they did slow down quite a bit and then got back onto the freeway. But as Mike was talking about, that was the first time we actually saw them get on surface streets after taking the 60 freeway all the way from Moreno Valley uh, where this car was stolen. So now it looks like a CHP officers only have the, uh, the choppers overhead. I don't know how, fa how far back the ground units are. I don't know if uh, Quan can see them uh, behind, but it looks like they are quite a bit behind this person now um, where they were, you know, right behind that person. But as we were telling you, CHP officers might go into tracking mode sometimes because of the fact 
that this driver was driving so recklessly and dangerously that they don't want to pose a danger to the public and nor to the officers. Yeah, and you know, no matter what move they've made, no matter how high speeds they've gone, we've got that helicopter tried and true that has been with them the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, by my count so far, there have actually been five law enforcement helicopters that have been involved with this. You have Star wow. from the Riverside County Sheriff's Office, and then you have, ooh, close calls. He switches all lanes there, last minute change on the freeway. <laughs> Uh, that is the dangerous driving, and I don't know if you saw that unit ahead of him, and that's why he made that move, but mm. uh, definitely hard to the right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we've had uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff, CHP, Riverside Sheriff, Riverside PD, and PD30 from the Ontario Police Department as it briefly went through their area. Uh, as we now, Susie, go southbound on the 110, uh, and we'll see. He's kind of on that collector road right there. We'll see which way he goes. As we get through these, some of these tall buildings, uh, forgive us in SkyCal there if we, if you know, this is kind of gets a little bit tricky sure. to maneuver. Um, especially, especially in downtown LA. Especially in downtown yeah. LA, this is kind of one of the worst spots, and we're in the definitely the the skyscraper area of downtown. And it looks like he may have exited, hmm. uh, I believe, on Sixth Street. I, I see the sheriff's helicopter that's kind of right over Sixth Street. So. You know, after he left the downtown area, he may have gotten his idea. Lots of tall buildings. Nobody's behind me. Why not go back? How do I lose the helicopters? Hmm. Uh, and it appears that, you know, maybe that was their plan, but they've exited 6th Street here off the 110 freeway in the downtown area. And again, lots of tall buildings for SkyCal to contend with. Uh, but I believe if we kind of pan down and look at the streets there, he is a, uh, kind of on 6th Street uh, going back towards to the north a little bit here. Uh, coming up on 5th Street. That's at least where the sheriff's helicopter is. So uh, SkyCal is going to kind of try to get in position here and, and uh, sort that out the best we can. But this is the challenge with tall buildings. Sure. And we we're talking about, you know, what are they doing? What is their plan? Do they have a plan? And as far as we know right now, it doesn't seem like they really have one. Uh, they were in Reno Valley, stole this car, came all the way out from Riverside County to L.A., as you see here in downtown L.A. with the traffic uh, right below, as you can see. And then uh, they exited at one point on surface streets and then they got right back on the freeway and it looks like they exited again thinking perhaps in downtown LA and they might lose a chopper. We've got a, a CHP unit there. Mm -hmm. If we come back down to the left Quan a little bit, there's the light and it's right under the underpass there. Uh, there's that CHP unit. I don't know if the suspect vehicle is down there anywhere. You've got them kind of searching here. So it's possible law enforcement may be not entirely clear on where they're at either as you've got that light that's kind of um, all over the place there. It's back on the freeway. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's hard to tell. And sure. again, this is the downfall mm -hmm. of not having those ground units there. And, you know, it's, it's also interesting when you, you, you know, you, got, you know these guys are live streaming and is it a joke to them? Do sure. they think this is funny? Are yeah. you getting a rise out of it? You know, so. Going that fast too. Right, right. And, you know, clearly this is, seems to be, you know, kind of a, a joy ride for them, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate because of the amount of, you know, people's lives they're putting at risk by doing all of sure. this. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, off the 110 freeway, and uh, as of right now, we don't see kind of that active search. We see the sheriff's helicopter uh, actually moving southbound on the 110. Mm. So I'm going to ask SkyCal, the southbound 110 uh, towards the 10 is now where that sheriff ship is. So maybe he got back on the freeway if we can kind of pan over that way and look for the car. But yeah, southbound on the 110 at the 10, that's where the uh, sheriff's helicopter is. Looks like the CHP helicopter is kind of following them that way, too southbound on the 110 through the 10 freeway. Yeah, this is the pursuit that uh, took us all the way from Moreno Valley to downtown LA and now looks like we're moving down now further south on uh, 110 south. But as we uh, take a look and uh, try to find this, look, relocate this for you right now, I want to run you down exactly what happened here. And oftentimes in this downtown LA area, we might lose a pursuit because of the fact that the, the high buildings uh, get in the way of our air, air traffic. Obviously, it's very difficult to maneuver around there. As they were live streaming, uh, we don't know. It's unclear what exactly they were say saying in that live stream, whether they were talking about you know, what they were doing, that they had stolen the car. But interestingly enough, it uh, looks like officers did get some information that could help them in their investigation here and maybe get them to uh, give some information as to where they might be headed as well. Who knows if they are live streaming about it? Maybe they're talking about locations. Maybe, you know, 
where they are, um, what they what they just did. But we're going to keep looking this looking for this for you. Uh, but again, this uh, stolen car out of Moreno Valley hit the 60 freeway all the way to downtown LA and got off on surface streets at least one time as far as we know, as far as we saw. And uh, it looks like they got back on the 110 freeway as where the CHP uh, helicopter was headed. We're going to be joining uh, CBS News at 11 now on KCAL. We want to welcome you to KCAL News at 11 on Channel 2. This is breaking news here. A high-speed CHP pursuit of a stolen vehicle out of Moreno Valley alongside Mike Rogers on the desk. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susie Sa. This is a pursuit that started with a stolen car in Moreno Valley. The car was stolen at about 1010 this evening. And then, Mike, they just headed on the 60 freeway. Of the 60 freeway at 125 miles an hour on the westbound side of the 60 freeway all the way until they got to the downtown area. Uh, they then went northbound on the 110 past Dodger Stadium, briefly got off, came southbound on the 110. My guess is because it worked, mm -hmm. they did it to get back into the downtown LA area. As soon as they got around 6th Street, right into the really tall buildings of downtown, they jumped off the freeway. Uh, and uh, here's the here's the video on the right side of your screen with that car driving exceptionally fast. CHP ultimately backed off. They were in a, what's called a tracking mode where they're following it from the air. Actually, two helicopters in the air. Uh, and I just want to point out, Susie, two helicopters from law enforcement, four television helicopters, and these guys are still in the wind after the buildings in downtown LA. That is just how difficult it can be to follow cars, especially at high rates of speed, through those buildings in downtown Los Angeles. There was no units behind the car, and right now they do not know where the suspect is. They are still looking. I do see, still see the CHP helicopter as well as the sheriff's helicopter. They're both going up and down the 110 freeway between the 101 and the 10, trying to find this suspect, but right now, Nobody has it. It actually sounds like they may have picked it back up northbound on the 110, uh, kind of right where we're at. Uh, if our photographer can pan to the right a little bit and uh, look at the 110 freeway, there are some CHP activity there that we're going to try to look at here uh, down on the freeway, Susie. And Mike, you know, we often lose the chases around downtown LA. Explain to us why. I'm sorry, Susie, say that one more time. I was just listening to some no, radio No, not traffic. at all. We often lose chases in downtown LA. Tell oh, us why. Oh, yeah, well, that's exactly what just mm -hmm. happened. And it's, it's because of the tall buildings. It's a very difficult to kind of maneuver around those. The, the best thing we like to do from SkyCal is not be directly overhead of anything, sure. but kind of look at it from an angle, uh, just because that's a better way to look at things. But when you get into downtown, uh, that is uh, unable to happen. And there is that police activity we were just talking about. So we're going to get in tight right there and see if we can tell what those guys are looking at. Hmm. Uh, if they're just kind of stopped there, I don't see the car there. You know, we've had situations before where they, uh, you know, get out and run on foot. Um, that doesn't appear to be the case, but uh, it's you know, hard to tell what those CHP units are looking for, Susie. Yeah, no kidding. And this is a very delicate operation because uh, officers, obviously, they know this is a stolen car. They also know that uh, some people are actually the people who are inside this car. We believe there is more than one occupant inside this vehicle, including the driver. We believe there are multiple people. And uh, we got some information that they are actually live streaming this, at least at the beginning of the chase or when we picked it up um, during the uh, 10 o'clock hour. Uh, they were live streaming inside the car as they were being pursued by CHP officers. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable sharing this now that the, the chase portion of this is over uh, and law enforcement has obviously had plenty of time to act on this. But on the live stream, I told you earlier, I, I didn't want to share everything that was going on in there for tactical purposes. But uh, because of where we're at in this now, uh, they were actually talking about a swap car. Hmm. So the suspects on the live stream were talking and plotting where they were going to swap out the car which, you know, who you know, knows we're talking why. about, you know, the information that they could be giving officers. I mean, my goodness. Uh, yeah, exactly. And CHP got real wise of that real quick. That was back in the San Gabriel Valley where they were going to swap the car. So clearly we're well past that now. But uh, CHP sent units to that location. It was a tunnel somewhere uh, that they were trying to check out. And it's, we're still trying to sort out if CHP ever found another car over there or what exactly happened. But the, on the live stream, they were trying to coordinate the swap. My, my question is, how did the CHP come upon that, how the what, live stream? Well, how so did they here's, find out? Yeah. So here's when we were listening to a little bit more. The suspects may be known to Riverside Sheriff. So it's kind of hard to tell if the victim of the GTA, the Grand Theft Auto, if the mm -hmm. victim knew the suspects or at least knew who they were. But it sounded like Riverside Sheriff may have kind of had a jump on 
who these guys were or oh. affiliated with or something like that that kind of maybe pointed them in that direction. Uh, and then obviously they weren't, the suspects weren't scared to show who they were if they were live streaming the event. Sure, no kidding. Well, if you're just joining us here, uh, this is breaking news here on KCAL News at 11. We want to thank our KCAL viewers on KCAL uh, for joining us for this pursuit. We want to invite you to join us for KCAL News at 11 on Channel 2.